On today's episode, Project Grip S14 hits the dyno. I'm here at On Point HQ. The S14 is loaded up. And today we're gonna see if the SR20 that I just rebuilt holds together and makes decent power. So the tune's already kind of pretty much dialed in. All we're looking to do is to make sure it's safe and reliable because after all, the engine has been replaced. So that's the main game plan for today. Before we actually get down to any tuning though, we wanna make sure that our timing is set according to the ECU. And that means it's the same timing figure at the engine as it is on the ECU. Locked it off at 15 degrees and it looks like it's at 15 degrees down there. It's kind of hard to see, but this is the way to do it. Since the SR was a bit hard starting, Sasha first played with the startup map to ensure the engine fires right up without hesitation, regardless of how hot or cool it is. Then came the steady state tuning. This procedure holds the engine at a defined RPM by Sasha and lets him dial in the proper fueling and timing. I'm sure you're wondering about that knocking noise. Well, more on that later. Now, onto the full throttle pulls. a couple of pulls here trying to get back to where we were at before and it looks like the car is making the same amount of power but we're running into a weird knock issue so Sasha hasn't put much timing into the engine at all and yet it seems to knock right it was like at what 11 degrees or something yeah we're knocking at 11 degrees where at this boost you'd normally be able to run 15 or 16 degrees pretty easily yeah, so that's bad news for us. Um, however, on the bright side, the EMS, we've played with the knock control, and you see that little dip there? So it's picking up the knock and reducing timing, which therefore reduces power. So that's kind of the conundrum we're facing right now, is we can't make any more power than really where it's at because of either, we don't know, we've been thinking maybe it's injectors or bad gas, I'll admit, you know, there's, the gas is probably about six months old, but I put half a fresh tank of 94 octane into it, so that really shouldn't be affecting it that much. And our next plan of attack is just to run the meth injection at all times, because both Sasha and I aren't confident that this setup is gonna be good for the racetrack if it's knocking at such a low power level and the meth injection will just make sure that we don't have issues with it. But I will say the SR engine isn't uh, winning me over here at all. I was hoping that we would make some good power after swapping it out and I wouldn't be convinced to go 1J or 2J, but now I'm really starting to consider it. When this car starts up, it's gonna be much louder than it was before. And the reason for that is, 
We dropped the down pipe so the cat isn't connected. We may think that the cat is causing a, it may be plugged, which is causing the somewhat low power that we've been getting and the knocking. So this is one way to test it with an open downpipe to see how it does. So here's the before and after with cat, without cat. And as you can see, we're picking up quite a bit of power. We're uh, up almost, what was it, 15 wheel? And the top end and the mid range is a little bit lower, but we're starting to think the cat may be clogged. Sasha kept adding timing and this time around it seemed to help as the SR continued to pick up power. All right, here is our final dyno chart. We're making almost 320 to the wheel and about 290 foot pounds of torque. And as you can see, it hits super quick at around 3,800 or 4,000 actually I should say. So when we hit full boost, which is 15 and a half PSI. And that was done on the open downpipe, right, Sasha? Yeah. And that's with no cat. Yeah, so no cat. We suspect the cat is a bit of a problem for us or for me. So I'm going to switch over to a test pipe. It's not good for this earth, but we're going to do it anyways. That's what we're looking at. So we are finished up here. And we will be headed to the racetrack to test this thing out. But I have to say, there was a lot of you that were dissing my rebuild job. And I want to point out that we have now lasted a full dyno session without the engine blowing up. So me using that really shady technique with the wrong uh, <laughs> sanding wheel worked out not so bad so the shady tree mechanic rebuild is pretty good up to now i just got back from taking a quick spin in the 240 and there's a little bit of a rattle and i assume that is chain rattle so the tensioner itself has pretty much expired probably which means i need to replace it because there's too much slop in the chain which causes the rattling when i rev the engine I'm thinking about buying a new Mazworks one, which actually has manual adjustment. So I think that could be beneficial to me rather than just going with another OEM new one because I think they're the same price anyways. And yet another problem that's been lurking is the clutch pedal uh, engagement point continues to rise as the car warms up. So I'm like, I don't know what the hell's going on. It may be a, a master or a slave cylinder. So what am I going to do? Replace both and do that before I hit the track. Also, I just finished up putting the test pipe in, so it's ready to go. After a couple of those other minor things I fixed, I gotta tell you, it's been plaguing me for quite a bit of time, but this is what happens when you modify a 20-year-old car with almost a 20-year-old motor. Dip, dip, dip. That's all I ever do is dip. <laughs> 